most other tools, if you think of it as a tool, it's like a saw and a hammer. You build something with a saw and hammer, like a birdhouse. And then the bird has to buy a damn saw and hammer to use the birdhouse. What kind of system is that? The SIPMATH tools are based on the data table. The data table in Excel vectorizes Excel. And that means that all the models you build with the SIPMATH tools are native Excel models. You can share them with 1.2 billion of your closest friends. That's probably up to 1.3 billion. So this is the 32nd version of the tools. There's RAND squared. Who the heck knows what that looks like? I initialize the model. I'm going to do a thousand random trials. I'm going to define that as an output cell. I'll call it test. I click OK. And when I initialized, it created this sheet for the data table. And then when I created the output cell, it actually created the range. The range is called test. That means I can look at the average of test. I can also make a, a big graph of test. And when I press the F9 key, a thousand trials, a thousand trials, a thousand trials, a thousand trials, and go to 10,000, then it's 10,000 trials, 10,000 trials. So a key here is that these models are interactive. That is another hugely important thing. Remember, this is what I refer to as limbic analytic. Now, let me open another model. Libraries, I say, are the big deal here. So I'm going to demonstrate the use of a SIP library. This model is a capital investment problem. We're uncertain about demand. And, and this is the kind of deal where we don't have that big a margin. We're, we're paying 30 bucks, sell it for 40. Because the average demand is 100, we order 100, and we naively think we're going to make a million dollars. But we're not because of the flaw of averages. And the reason for that is you can't sell more than you bought. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this model now is use a library. So when I initialize, I'm going to go out and grab an external library. I'm going to go to a demand library. So this is the demand for these widgets. What does a demand library look like? Well, it doesn't look like much. It says we've got some metadata. The average is stored in position 1001, the 95th percentile at 1002. If I click the little plus sign, it says there are all 1,000 trials. How exciting is that? But it's now open. So this is like my electricity that I can plug into this model. So the next button is library input. I click demand. I click OK. Yes. Type over that. Well, now I have the first trial of that demand SIP. I could look at the other trials. Trial one, trial two, trial three. Well, now that I've plugged in the input SIP, I go down here to profit. I say define that as an output. Oh, and now here, let me just show you again what the, what the PM table looks like. It created this when I opened the library because it knew the library had a thousand trials in it. Here's the PM table sheet. And then as soon as I, as I define this, so define that as an output, click on profit, we get a little spark line in here. We now have 1,000 trials. And let's look at the average of profit. So I can type average. Oh, so just remember, on the PM table sheet, each column, and you could have many, many columns, has a name. It's a range name in Excel, so you can simply refer to it with any, any statistical formula. Now, here is the most important button for practical purposes. You sure don't want to type in a range name every time you, 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 you get a statistic, like average. You can just click on that cell. And if I had a bunch of output cells, I could then drag this. Well, that's not giving me the average of profit. That's just the average of the single cell until I go up here and say, get stats. See, it says average of D3. When I click get stats, it's going to run over to the PM table sheet. And so the profit of the average demand was a million. The average profit was 600,000. I don't have to tell you that's not close enough, even for government work. What's the chance? that, oops, 
that profit is greater than 400,000. So I go down here, I click on the chance of whatever button. It's the only statistic you really need. You, and then I say, what's the chance that that is greater than that? 